Necropolis League has been out since March 29th, has received many patches and additions in form of new scarabs, and I played through the story way too many times already. A lot of people are also throwing the acronym FOMO around, as in fear of missing out. I, I don't have that feeling at all. This league has so many new opportunities to farm currency than ever before in Path of Exile. And us, the normal folk, can actually try things out and experiment because many scarabs are cheap, sextants are thankfully not a thing anymore, and of course the current price of Headhunter. Like what the fuck? Hi, I'm Daniel. In this video, I will go over my journey and the different strategies that I tried in Necropolis so far. And don't worry, there is only one tier 17 strat at the very end. Let's start off with my first strat, which got me my headhunter at around 37 divines. Yes, I massively overpaid. Thanks for letting me know. Please don't post the current headhunter price in the comments down below. It makes me sad. Oh. Ambush or strong boxes are fairly simple. Some of the monsters in the area are in strong boxes that you can click on, which spawns those monsters. These monsters and the loot from the strong box, even in its normal form, has increased quantity and rarity. So all we want is to juice up the map, add a bunch of strong boxes, make them rare, and corrupt them either manually or through the Atlas skill tree. It's just fun to click a strong box, blow up the monsters, and get loot. My Atlas strategy at League Snart focused on maps, shrines, Nico to help me with resistances, scarabs, and of course strong boxes. I prefer Searing Exarch because the minions spawn instantly and they drop a lot of bubblegum currency. But I do have an E12 Worlds alternative in the description below if you prefer that. At the start I just alked my maps, checked the mods obviously so I don't run a reflect map, and exploded everything until I had some currency. With that currency I bought some scarabs. For the scarabs I recommend using two ambush scarabs and the ambush scarab of potency to increase the effect and thus loot of strong boxes. Also choose the ambush option on the map device. If you still feel a bit weak, especially at leak start, I can recommend using one domination scarab instead of an ambush one. Maybe you're lucky and you get the acceleration shrine. It literally is straight up dopamine in your brain. I don't know, it's just the best shrine. It feels so good. And at last, I chose the waste pool map because it has narrow paths and that fits my blade vortex build, but I also saw people run dunes, which can drop the fortunate diff card. Now, if you follow this strat and get your headhunter, you can try the next strat. Yes, it's Legion, I'm sorry. Now with Headhunter being so cheap, there really isn't a reason not to try Legion. As mentioned in my now outdated Headhunter guide, you really need a proper build to blast Legion. So if you are a Giga Chad Earthquake build, don't do this. <laughs> I highly recommend a build with massive AoE and explosions, projectiles or something that chains. You might also not want to run this strat if you have a 980 Ti. It might blow up. You know, don't don't comment down below, thanks Daniel. My PC blew up after my first Legion. I warned you, okay? <laughs> Legion can be quite FPS heavy. If you got the PC and the build, you can blow up legions in Jungle Valley or Dunes all day. This is more expensive to run and also more dangerous because of the hordes of rare monsters. But again, if you farm the Headhunter with the Strongbox strat, you'll probably be okay. I used two Legion Scarabs and a Legion Scarab of Officers to spawn more Sergeants, which have those fancy loot icons above them. In addition to that, I chose the Legion option on the map device and the E12 Worlds influence to increase the quantity and rarity of drops. I just like this strat because it's fun blowing up monsters and is generally more for the Zuma, which I am. You can find the Atlas skill tree in the description down below with a focus on a more relaxing mapping experience. Feel free to experiment. Switching gears to something completely different, the Forbidden Sanctum. I made a video about Sanctum last league because I disliked the whole wisp juicing strategy. Sanctum seemed to be everything I wanted. It was fairly fast, dropped divine orbs at the end and didn't require a headhunter. So I tried Sanctum for a single room with my Trapper build. Wait, one room? Yes, the reason is damage. I need an unbelievable 
ungodly amount of single target damage to make Sanctum fun. If you don't mind whacking at those enemies for a solid 20 seconds, go ahead. But I one-shotted these last league with Penance Brand of Dissipation, and it was so much more fun doing a run every 15 minutes and collect my divines. So two things. First, I didn't try out Sanctum and didn't make a build for it this league. But second, I still think it's probably extremely profitable and worth doing because you pay like 20 alchemy orbs or 8 chaos orbs for a sanctum that makes you roughly a divine in 15 minutes. Take this with a grain of salt of course because I haven't done sanctum but I really can't imagine it isn't worth doing. If you got a build that already does a lot of single target damage and is fairly fast, buy a few forbidden tomes and try it out. I really enjoy getting currency and not a bunch of other stuff like uniques, emblems, splinters, scarabs and so on. It's also a nice cleanser compared to running uber juiced maps all the time, especially with tier 17 maps now. But before we're talking about tier 17s, here's something weird. Heist. I tried out Heist very briefly over the course of just two days. I know this is barely anything for any content in PoE, but I see the potential in running Heist even if it's really rough for a variety of reasons. Something that I had to accept was that a Heist runner or Heist build doesn't need damage. You only want speed and enough defenses so you don't die. It's still a bit annoying having to spam Toxic Rain and stare at the rare mob praying it doesn't interrupt the NPC. Keep in mind I was still leveling the NPC and also had no gear on them. So this would be less of an issue as I played more. This is by far the smallest problem though. There are much bigger issues that are very specific to me that some players might not care about. First off, I hate getting single digit stacks of currency. I understand you can convert them into divines with a trinket that costs more than some people make in an entire league. But anyhow. Another thing is that most content is useless to even open. All you care about are essences, fragments, currency and that is mostly it. I wish we could craft contracts to have more of what I want, but that isn't what Heist is all about. One great thing are the big drops like replica unique items that can sell for multiple divines and the very big drops like a cogwork ring or a simplex amulet. I love when content has these potentially massive rewards. Uh, anybody needs a replica feral's fur? What? Hello? But now it gets a bit complicated, so stick with me. Let me briefly start off comparing it to Sanctum. Ignoring the build requirement, all you need for Sanctum in trade is to buy a bunch of forbidden tomes and run them. That is it. There really isn't any friction. Sure, relics can help, but in my opinion, since Sanctum League, a great build is everything. Relics are nice, but a shit build will suck at Sanctum. Amazing relics will not make your build much better. So with this, how is it in Heist? Well, first off, you need to unlock the NPCs because you might need them for the Grand Heists. To unlock them, you need to run many contracts and they need a lot of rogue markers. You get both from mapping or you buy them on trade in bulk. But you probably don't make enough currency just from running contracts. So the Atlas is kind of mandatory until later. Then you need to level those NPCs and equip them with items which you thankfully get during contracts and grand heists. But again you run out of rook markers many many times until you get to the point where you're comfortably farming heist. This is just my guess after running the content for two days but I was constantly realizing I was running out of something all the time. Back to Sanctum, you buy Forbidden Tomes, get the vines at the end, and then buy a bunch more Forbidden Tomes. Rinse and repeat. Heist really needs something to make it less tedious. At least I think so. If you enjoy Heist or think this isn't a big issue, I highly recommend trying it out this league. Now for the very last thing, which is the T17 Barrel Strat. 
like many others, I watched Fubgun's video on it and it raised an eyebrow or two. Was this really worth running? Like this, this seemed a bit too good to be true. The short answer is yes. It's really that good. I took my lightning arrow headhunter legion blaster and threw it at T-17s. I died many times and still do, but I made more currency than spamming legions. Sometimes it also took me a minute less than doing legions in dunes. This is kind of insane. As someone who has a full-time job, I really enjoyed the T-17 barrel strat and the overall vibe of T-17s. To a degree, they are insanely difficult, you need a pretty strong build and preferably a headhunter. On the other side, you can of course make a Giga Chad Archmage Frostbolt Nova build or whatever, but they are probably more expensive than a basic lightning arrow build and usually slower, so I don't prefer them. But the most important part is I want bigger drops and less smaller ones, meaning I want to see more divines and less 0.5c scarabs on my screen. T17s are doing exactly that with this strategy. I see a lot of high value scarabs and divine drops, not hundreds of splinters or three ancient shards. I need to be very careful on how much I click because I feel it in my hands. I do stretches and you know watch out for myself, but playing PoE for many hours and knowing that part of my family has issues with their hands, I don't want to have content in which I have to loot dozens or hundreds or thousands of tiny things. T17 maps fixes some of the issues I had with the game for a very long time. I wish it wouldn't be only behind T17s though, and we could have bigger drops everywhere. Maybe with a change on the Atlas skill tree? I will have to explain what I mean by that in another video, or else this video becomes an hour long and it takes already a long time to make these videos. I will link Fubgun's video in the description down below if you want to try out this strategy. But keep in mind, it's quite expensive to do and very difficult depending on your build. Good luck. I hope I gave you some ideas or convinced you to try out new strategies in the last two months of Necropolis. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe. I mean, it's free, you know? Anyways, um, don't forget to stay hydrated, gamers. Until next time. Bye-bye.